What do you think is a good thing in this world? You know, in some cultures, that, that, that there are such things that are so good that they got a good of, them, of their own, a good of their own, a god of their own. Like in Greek culture, love was such a good thing in their society that they made a goddess in its image. Sweet Aphrodite, wisdom and knowledge, another good thing in this world. They made a goddess of that, of leadership and talent in leading and, 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 and authorizing and organizing and giving and caring and replenishing the need and creating order. The, the kingship, they gave a good to that too. Not that variety, not that difference in the good that we follow today in Christianity of milk and honey. Milk and honey, that's a good of what? That's a good of respect. That's a good of honesty with a kind touch. Yeah. The other belief systems, they have goods of their own too that treat it with a different, different type of uh, mythology, different method. But they also have their goods to them too. And Ares, he was a good too. Everyone thinks of Ares as this great warrior of loss. You know what Ares really was? He was a teacher of aggression. Have you ever been aggressive towards what you wanted in life? As though fighting for what you want to be? Fighting to get that good job? Fighting to get your meals done? Fighting to cook a good meal? The ingredients aren't coming together right, and you're all worried about it. You know, fight through it, and in the end of that little mini battle to make that good meal for your family, fighting time, you got so long to get it done before it's time to eat. Did you win the fight or did you eat late? But you're aggressive. That's what Aries was about, aggression. Not wars of loss as they all portray him. In Christianity, Christ, he's of milk and honey. Honesty and sweetness. If I honestly told you what you did was wrong, but then at the same time said that you could make it better, would I not be treating you with milk and honey? Say you did an act that was just given, not of your heart. You went out and you produced it. And honestly, I approached you and I said, Hey, why did you do that to that person? Why did you treat those others that way? Do you know you can fix that mistake? Where's the honey in that? The fixing. Where's the honest milk? So what is Christianity the good of? A wise thing. Milk and honey. What are other goods goods of? What's your good good of? It's the traffic goods. Ever, ever had a day where you're just traveling through traffic and you just don't seem to hit a red light at all? You just all green lights all the way through? The traffic goods are with you. Those would probably be more like a nymph, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Modern day mythology. I mean, it is still alive today. And I'm still following the ways of Aries. Being aggressive towards what I want in life. Defeating my enemy. If they should make themselves my enemies. Because I do not want to make an enemy of you. The truth is, I want to be friends with you. And see you accomplish the greatest of your dreams. Be aggressive towards your dreams. Go after what you seek in life. The choice of your desires. I don't want to see loss of those of your, see loss of your dreams. Or loss of you. Just as Aries of old did not. That great good of aggression. But aggression got confused with war. Wars of loss. Is all he's ever remembered for. But Aries was so much more than wars of law. It was also wars to achieve. The war of the thinker.
so more commonly associated with Athena. But the war to be aggressive and be as you choose in life and go after your dreams and your accomplishments. Not just one good exists in this world. Not just one thing is good. You can treat the world with nothing, honey. I believe fully in that. Always being honest. With a touch of kindness to it. Unless, of course, you run out of honest, uh, kindness, and then it's just milk alone. Then I'm just plain honest and telling you you're doing a nasty job. And trying to return the favor. That comes into areas of loss. I would rather be kind to you and say, hey, look, you're hurting these people in this fashion. For example, what's an example of someone majorly hurting people? When we went into Iraq and took it over, we caused great turmoil and hurt their people and their, their society a lot. Because they had a somewhat balanced system of growth. But now it's our job in the honey department to say, all right, we may, we, we may have taken over this country and that may have been wrong. But now we have to help them regrow. We have to bring them water. We have to help them plant fields of crops. We have to supply for their hungry. We need to give them an ample supply so that they can go on to the future without worries of whether or not they're going to be able to eat whether or not they're going to have food. Oil should be our last concern in Iraq. Our first concern should be making sure that those people have the source of food and nourishment and needs so that these great evils don't arise to take their place and control these people against what we're trying to do there. What is it we're trying to do? Both democracy, right? Which is nothing wrong with democracy. It wasn't dictatorship. Which, well, in some opinions is wrong, in some opinions is right. But it wasn't really a full dictatorship because he still had so many rings below him and above them that are still in power. But if we go in there and we start sponsoring and aiding in growth of crops, of food, of economics, Start giving them, sharing some of our technology to grow, to plant in desert soil. What will we have in this Iraqi communities? Outside of what really matters to us, but what will they have in Iraq? They will have food. They will have a lifting of the knee. They will no longer have to turn to these terrorist cells. And pretty soon, the land is fruitful. So what would my goal be for Iraq? To make it a fruitful place. To be aggressive towards making it prosperous. So that the need for these uh, terrorists and these dark forces and these horrible people that come along to take the, and use the needy to destroy and to create more loss don't have a part to play. So there is no room for them to survive in all the prosperity and all the lifting of need we produce in that country. That's my direction I would head out with Iraq. Of course, we would still have to search out the small amounts of those that are still trying to use the needy. But if we lift the need, where's the needy? That's like milk and honey. We're being honest with them. We're being honest with them. We're honestly supporting them. And we're giving them a little bit extra. We're lifting them in need. We're giving them some honey, some food, some supplies. And we're honestly returning the attack and protecting the people of Iraq as well as the people of the, of the world from the terrorists that sprung up there due to our bullying action. But how many goods do exist? How many different possible good things can we do in this world that are so great 
that there are without a whole, without a whole, how many goods do exist? They could be called uh, a deity of that good. We've got the milk and honey, the honest and the honest and true sweetness. See, milk and honey, Christianity. Christianity, look, look, take a look from Christianity's point of view. There's something good in the world, and it's represented by all these goods. To represent that good truly, I have to say quite honestly, milk, and then with the sweetness, and it's got the benefit of honey. See the milk and honey there? And what good is it that you can think of that could be represented in that fashion? That of Greek of all? They have Apollo of enlightenment. Of possibilities of future cast. Protector of the endless possibilities that can exist. Knower of past or possible past to what you seek. But which will you choose? To follow in the belief that there is only one good thing in this world? To follow in the belief that there is many good things supported by Christianity as they are? As they are truly? That this is good and this is good and this is good and this is why it's good. The honey. A land of milk and honey of the good. Of belief. And of the individuals you meet in your life. He is good in this way and... Well, quite honestly, he's not in this way. Kind of an Aries segment there. And in the one side, Aries was good at teaching aggression, but he was the first. But he also created great wars of loss. But he was the first to rally the Olympic Games. He was the first one to sit in the stands cheering on those athletes because he saw the aggression and the training and the discipline it took for them to get to the point they were at. So is Aries such a bad guy? He can be. If you challenge him to a game of war, war of loss, but if you challenge him to a war of being as best you can be, he can train and teach you of what? We're following in him. To be aggressive towards your what? What you choose to be in life. What you dream to be. Not war of loss. In a competition, say a foot race, he can tri if you if you are uh, with Aries, you are training hard, you are being disciplined, you are being aggressive in your training. In a day of competition, you are aggressive in that race, and Aries is with you. And should you win that game, that war, what has that aggression led you to and taught you? But that was an aggression of loss, was it? So how many good things are there in this world other than aggression? Which can be good and can be bad depending upon how it is used. How aggressive, how many different goods are there? There's the goods of the government. Government does some good. I gotta say it's protective measures that does some good. But it's also got some, quite honestly. Problems in the system, some corruption, which we're going to clean out with a celebration of personal choice here at United Unified Belief. And what is the name of those other goods? We've got the Christ good, we've got the Muslim good, we've got all these different goods. Teaching their goods in their own ways. Teaching their own goods. We've got the Hindu goods, the Buddhist goods. Buddhist good, so many goods. And you know what? A true Christian can see that there's not just one good in existence, but that Christianity is working with these other goods in milk and honey, in love and truth. Milk and honey, what they share. Where does Christianity share? with those other goods? What does Muslims share with those other goods? 
quite honestly, where are they unique in their teaching? But yet they all do exist as individuals. Yet, together they make up what I like to call the United Unified Belief. And I thank you for your time, Christopher David Clayton, a member of the United Unified Belief. Do you believe? I believe.